Okay, hi, you're watching Greg's Be Eats. And if you don't know by now, I have been eating about 90% fewer carbs, sugars, and vegetables since June 2022, when I suspected that I had diabetes. I had all the signs lah, you know. And I made this drastic diet change because my health was declining quite badly. I documented this in my vlog entitled My Health Journey. You can find the link to that vlog in the video description below. Fast forward to a year and a half later, and my health has vastly improved. So much so that I was convinced that my way of eating 90% less carbs and sugars and vegetables, minimizing vegetable oils, uh, eating more fat and meat, and eating the very occasional small meal of carbs once a week was a good way forward for the future. But on the upside of actually doing this experiment, because I didn't experience any major health benefits, it means that the way I was eating that I settled on before I went on this diet seems to be a good, healthy way-ish to sort of like move forward lah. As far as I know for now. Which is, as I said, prioritizing meat and fat and eating 90% less processed foods, carbs, sugars and vegetables and seed oils. Um, and maybe the occasional carb meal once in a while. But that said, I see this, but I've yet to do a blood test and a health scan lah. So my opinion might change and I will be going on a blood test and health scan very, very soon. So as I said in that vlog, I was convinced pending a blood test and health check. And well, I did a blood test and health check and now I have the results. And in short, the news is mostly good, but with some bad. On the bright side, I did a CAC scan, a coronary calcium scan, which does a scan of the heart and it looks for calcium deposits in the heart arteries. And it's a great way to detect if you have early heart disease, way before you have any symptoms. And the result is that I have zero deposits, which means that I have no risk of heart disease currently. Other good news is that my liver and kidney is in great health, except that I need to drink more water. Um, that's an easy fix lah. On the neutral side, my total cholesterol is 330, down from 352 in January 2023, which is high according to mainstream science, but not in the context of a low-carb diet. What is concerning is that my triglyceride HDL ratio is on the high side. That's triglycerides divided by HDL cholesterol. Uh, it went from 3.2 to 4.1, and ideally the result should be 1. My HbA1c, which measures the sugar in my blood, is 6, down only a bit from 6.2. So I went from being borderline pre-diabetic to borderline not diabetic. In Singapore, if you are above 6, you are considered pre-diabetic. My aim is to get it down to 5.5, like, just to be safe. My fasting insulin reduced to 8.3 from 16.2 in January 2023. Um, actually, 16.2 is a pretty good result if you eat carbs. But my doctor says that in the context of a low-carb diet, that number has to be ideally below 10 lah. So um, for me, that's good news. So the metric that is still of concern is that my triglycerides are high. And my doctor's advice is that I need to eliminate even more carbs and sugars. He explains that essentially I am consuming too much energy, whether it is from carbs or sugars or fat. And so I need to pick one. Energy from fat is preferable because it is highly nutritious, it doesn't raise your insulin, and it is also highly satiating. So it doesn't make you want to eat more. As compared to sugars and carbs, which is basically empty calories, it severely spikes your insulin and it makes you fat. So I can't have my cake and eat it lah, you know. Um, I can't just go on a 90% less carbs and sugars and cheat on some sweet here and there and eat a once a week carb meal, I, um, I can't do any of that. I have to be stricter than that and reduce that remaining 10% because of my high triglycerides. And reducing carbs and sugars are the best way of reducing those triglycerides. And why are high triglycerides bad? Having high triglyceride levels can increase your risk for heart disease, stroke, and nerve damage. Research has found strong links between having elevated, consistent triglyceride levels, the atherosclerosis, and insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is where your organs and muscles become resistant to the effects of insulin. And if unchecked, it leads to prediabetes, which then leads to diabetes. So because my triglycerides are high and my HbA1c is only borderline normal, it means that I need to go stricter with my carbs and sugars to let my body heal. So as I said before, I previously thought that Having a bit of carbs and sugars in my diet, maybe 50 to 100 grams a day, and maybe a carb meal once a week to maintain this channel would be okay. 
but looking at my blood test results, I have to be stricter and be close to 0 to 20 grams of carbs a day. And I have to cut out that once a week carb meal. So in practical terms, I need to cut out foods like uh, fried chicken wings because it has batter in it. Uh, anything sweet is a no-no, even if it is slightly sweet. So no yakitori, no sweet and sour pork, no more bakwa, no more char siu. And I even have to be careful with my vegetable intake and even my dairy intake because the vegetables and dairy contain carbs as well. It doesn't mean that I can't eat it, but I have to be careful not to overconsume it. I have to seek out low-carb vegetables and look at low-carb cheeses and no milk because it has lactose which is a sugar. Heavy whipping cream is okay but again I can't go wild on it because it has a small amount of carbs and sugars inside. Full fat yogurt is a very borderline case. Each serving is 20 grams of carbs which is already hitting my carb limit for the day. So my current plan is to make this adjustment of cutting out carbs and sugars and again test in 6 months to a year to see what my results are. And if my triglycerides are still high, I have to make further adjustments to my diet. According to Dave Feldman, a low-carb dieter who has done a ton of obsessive research on cholesterol, there are other factors like coffee consumption and a high overconsumption of dietary fat, which results in stubbornly high triglycerides. So what does this mean for this YouTube channel? Well, I'm not sacrificing my health for YouTube views, that's for sure. Um, it's not worth the cost. So instead, I'll be doing low-carb reviews, mm, where you can eat low-carb perhaps. And there are also some hawker foods that are naturally low-carb, which I will focus on, like mutton soup, roast duck, bakute, fish soup, that sort of thing. And of course, there will be some health talk, lah, you know, uh, here and there. So unfortunately, I won't be able to continue my normal hawker reviews, lah, where you can find the best tasting this and that and so on. Lah. Now, I will be focusing on foods that are great tasting, but are also highly nutritious for your body and mind. And to be honest, I think that is what's missing in Singapore's culinary landscape. Lah. Everybody's so obsessed with taste that people forget that food is supposed to be about health and nutrition first and foremost. As I said, for the past year and a half, I did try to work on my health as well as run this channel normally, but as my blood tests show, um, that isn't going to be possible, which is very regrettable, lah, you know. So viewers of my normal Hawker reviews, I thank you for supporting me all these years and you know who you are. I've enjoyed reading all of your comments and I thank you very much for your PayPal donations. And I will fully understand if you move on from this channel. Lah. And for those of you who choose to remain subscribed, thank you for staying on. I have a lot of low carb content planned like general guides on the best low carb dishes to eat at a particular Hawker Centre or in a particular area. But those are big projects which will take some time to produce lah. Which means that there will be longer gaps in between new content, unfortunately. So I just wanted to make this video to let you know what's happening. And if you have any questions, comment below and I'll try to answer them when I have time. And I'll hopefully see you in the next video lah. Bye bye.